anybody who's followed United People's Tea for a long time, you'll know that I've been very vocal and angry and showed a lot of disdain towards the structure of my football club. Manchester United behind the scenes has been a calamity for over a decade, really. But revolution is happening right now. Not evolution, not changes, proper revolution. Creating the context and the circumstances behind the scenes at the club that would allow Eric Ten Hag to succeed. And in this video, I'm going to explain all these changes to you. So it might be a little bit confusing, all these people leaving. Where do they sit? What were their jobs? Who will they be replaced by? I'm going to explain it all in this video, so hopefully you understand it. So please, if you do enjoy the video and you do learn something by the end of it, it's going to be very informative. Please go down there, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and join the community. But look, in this video, I will describe how we're going from this structure as it was at the start of the season, to this structure now. And there's been a lot of change, and I'm going to run through and explain it all to you in detail. So make sure, as I said, drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. But let's go into it, and let's start where it all really began. And this is March last year, when John Murto was appointed as our club's first football director, with Darren Fletcher brought in as, the, as a technical director. A lot was said about this at the time. Whether John Murto was the right man for the job, whether Darren Fletcher was the right man for the job, they didn't really technically have the credentials. They weren't exactly the best in class. Uh, and there's been a, there was a lot of concern. But there's been a lot that's happened since. It's all happened on the John Murto's watch that shows me he's definitely better than we thought he was. But it started with those. But really, it truly began when this news broke. After the European Super League collapse, April 2021, Manchester United have announced that Ed Woodward is leaving his role at the end of 2021. And I swear to God, I wanted to have a straight up party because this man, he's not single handedly responsible for Manchester United's demise, but he's got the blood on his hands. It, it very much is down to Woodward and what he allowed to happen. He let his ego get in the way. I won't go into it. We've, we've spoken about this so many times, but Woodward's departure was crucial if Manchester United were truly going to change, if Manchester United were truly going to go forward. But of course, Ed Woodward needed to be replaced. And then the announcement came in January 2022 that Richard Arnold would be coming in and replacing him and becoming the first CEO of Manchester United. And of course, there were a lot of concerned fans. He's just going to be a Woodward V2. He's, not, he's just going to be another Glazer stooge, another Glazer puppet. No true change will really come whilst Richard Arnold is in charge. But there was one thing that he said at the time which gave me a little bit of hope. I always try and focus on the positives. And if I was being an optimist, I listened to this. And the idea that Richard Arnold wanted to delegate, wanted to have the right people in place and wanted to take advice. And I've said this quite a few times here on United People's TV. I said, look, if Richard Arnold is clever, then he would have seen all the mistakes that this man made. He would have seen the good things that he did in the corporate side, but all the mistakes he made on the football side. And if he wanted to be a success in his position, which he now held, he couldn't make the same mistakes. And I tell you what, what we've started to see since is showing that that really is a change in mentality and a change towards, as I said, this delegation that we heard because Ralph Rannick came in in November. And in my opinion, that was the smart and correct decision at the time. I don't backtrack on that because he's been a poor interim manager. He's been a terrible interim manager in terms of results. But Radnick was brought in not because of his ability to come in as an interim manager. It was what he was going to do next as a consultant, which he is yet to do. Now, of course, the Austria job, that confuses things. Of course it does. But I still stand by the fact that I think this appointment there of Ralph Radnick as an interim manager was a smart and correct decision by John Murta. And then what happened next after that? Well, there was a huge tug and war, tug, tug of tug and war, maybe tug of war between Poch and Ten Hag. We know who won that. But the day before Ten Hag was announced, we got this breaking news: that Jim Lawler and Marcel Bout, Manchester United two leading scouts, have left the club. If we head back to the hierarchy, we go down here and we can see Jim Lawler and Marcel Bout down here at the bottom, right? They've gone. They've left the club. And that is a significant moment, absolutely significant moment, because both of them were uh, partly responsible for, the, uh, for the, the wastage of over a billion pounds on transfers that Manchester United have done post-Fergie. We've wasted so much money. Ultimately, it was this man's responsibility. 
He was the one in charge of signing off on all these signings. But Jim Lawler and Marcel Bout were part of the problem as well. So they left, and then a day later, Manchester United announced that Eric Ten Hag was going to be appointed as our next full-term manager. And this is the thing that got a lot of fans excited. Of course it did. Eric Ten Hag. We're like, we're watching our football club make what, what we will all consider to be smart decisions. We're not used to it as United fans. We're just not used to it. Having this man in charge at the helm for a, for a long, long time built us into natural pessimists. We expected the worst at United. We absolutely expected the worst from Richard Arnold when he came in. We expected the worst from John Murto when he came in. Maybe there's a reason, there's a, there's a genuine reason here to be optimistic. And I'll tell you what, when this broke, this news broke here, this is just as significant as this man being as this man leaving. Matt Judge resigning from his role as Manchester United's director of football negotiations. This is a significant and huge moment for Manchester United. Because look, if we go over here and we take a look at this hierarchy here, this is what it was. As I said, Jim Lawler's now gone, Marcel Bout's gone, Matt Judge has gone, and Ralph Rannick, of course, is not going to be interim manager anymore. He's going to be a consultant. So I've sort of drawn this up. This is not complete. By any stretch of the imagination, by the way, big up to the, the Athletic for making the original. I've just tweaked it. We can see we've got over here, we've got Ralph Randick on the right-hand side. Let me draw a look. Ah, sorry. Let me get this bad boy out. Woo! That is a terrible circle. Ralph Randick on the right-hand side. But look, we are going to be getting a deputy director of football. I can't even see this. It's, the pencil's black on the black. That's stupid. Anyway, Eric Ten Hag, he's over here. I think that's going to be around there. My God, my circles are terrible. Eric Ten Hag, but look, this is hopefully happening as well. Paul Mitchell coming in as a transfer. I, I, I will run into that in a bit of detail, but you can see where the structural changes have happened and where they're happening. And I think it's absolutely significant for Manchester United that these changes have happened because they will make an absolutely massive difference to our football club. Because if we now look at the structure here, let me pull it up full screen again for you there. It's so much stronger than it was before. But the change isn't finished yet. As I said, we can go here and we can see that Matt Judge has resigned. And if I'm looking at who's responsible, really, it probably falls down to Ed Woodward and Matt Judge mainly. These two blokes, corporate guys, Glazer Stooges, accountants involved in the takeover of our club by the Glazers, they're now out of the club. And it allows United to really focus on what's coming next. And we can see from the Telegraph that Manchester United are now going to be bringing in a new transfer supremo, they call it. There's going to be two more appointments made by Manchester United. If I was to head back again, head back over here to the, to the hierarchy, it's going to be, you can see Paul Mitchell down here. Let me try and draw a better line this time. Paul Mitchell. That's, hope, that's one appointment we're going to make. And over here a new deputy football director. These are the two appointments we have to make. Would we like to see Alan Dawson leave the club? Of course we would. We don't know whether he will or not. But again, I'm going to be focusing on the positives. We know that, of course, there's a lot that needs to happen in terms of Eric Ten Hag's staff. Mike Phelan is still technically there as assistant manager. I don't think he will be much longer. And if we're looking at all his coaches, that is as yet undefined. So there's still a, quite a lot of work to do. It's not complete by any stretch of the imagination. But i tell you one thing. It is a hell of an upgrade on what it used to be already. And this is really reason to be excited because I, for, for the life of me, I thought something like this was a pipe dream. Absolute pipe dream. The idea that you could have someone like Paul Mitchell coming in and just controlling the recruitment side of things with Ralph Radnick being a consultant to sort of steer a bit of a direction, if you know what I mean, a, a bit of a, a thought process. That's what he's good at. And Eric Ten Hag as a manager, I just never expected our club to do it. But instead of just, as I said, instead of sitting on this structure here, which ultimately was the straitjacket that held us from progress, we've now got into this situation where we really have changed things. Things really are changing. And they're all changing in order to help this man. Because I can now confidently, with my hand on my heart, say you can look at Manchester United with some real hope about what's coming next in the future. On and off the pitch, there's real genuine reason to be excited. John Murto, so many people doubted him. John Murto's doing a good job, a very good job so far. Richard Arnold, everybody expected Richard Arnold to be an Edward Wood V2. 
what I'm seeing so far is showing me a very, very different type uh, of man in charge at Manchester United, who's actually genuinely delegating the football in decisions. And the man who's making those football in decisions, John Murto, is getting it right and getting it right for this man here. Because without these changes, Eric Ten Hag would have suffered the exact same fate that Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Ralph Randnick did. Failure, ultimately to win the Premier League or the Champions League and to take Manchester United back to the top. But with these changes, these true revolutionary changes, there's big reason to be optimistic. There's still more to do. We still need a head of transfer operations to come in and replace Matt Judge. Hopefully it's Paul Mitchell. We still need a deputy football director. I don't think Darren Fletcher will be promoted into that role. I think someone's coming in and we don't know who that's going to be. Two more appointments need to be made there. And of course, we need all of Ten Hag's coaching staff to be confirmed. But there really is reason to be optimistic about the future, ladies and gents. It's been a rough ride for the last eight, nine, ten years. We had 20 years of winning it all, and it was brilliant. None of us expected the fall from grace to be as big as it was, but that was because of the Glazers and because of the system that they had in place. We're now changing that system. John Murto is the man leading that charge. Richard Arnold is the man delegating the responsibilities to John, and he's getting it right. And I'm not used to my club getting things right off, off the pitch, let alone on the pitch. And it's great to see. I think there's massive reason to be optimistic. And I hope this video is sort of explained to you to help you understand, as I said, how we've gone. Let me get them up here from this structure to this structure at the moment and why that really is a big reason to have a smile on your face as a United fan. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What more changes would you want to see? Make sure you subscribe if you're new to United People's TV. I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to what's coming next. I really am.